Bioshock. It is a tale for the ages. Who among us could have imagined that a first-person shooter video game developed by a studio with no previous major commercial success would go on to have such a lasting cultural resonance? Released into the world in 2007, it was met with thunderous applause from both critics and players alike. With 14 years since its release, it is hard to think of another video game that people remain so strongly attached to after so much time. The reasons for this are threefold. From a gameplay and technical perspective, it is innovative, captivating and unique. It is visually beautiful. The attention to detail borders on the absurd and the open plan world allows the player to explore at their own pace. They learn about the backstory of the world primarily through audio logs that record the history of the world's inhabitant. The game developers tried to break the mould of the linear game in which the player only discovers what they are told and it worked. In distinction to purely linear games, Bioshock feels like the developers have built the game in an already existing world. It somehow defies genres. It's survival horror, first person shooter and story based game all in one. This is key to its success. Art and entertainment that does not strictly delineate itself by genre has the ability to touch multiple elements of the psychology of its audience. It makes it feel far more real in their minds. The second reason is that Bioshock acts as a commentary on the medium of video games themselves. It pushes the boundaries of the industry to the limit almost satirising the general standard of video games. It challenges the player to ask an existential question. What is the very purpose of a video game? Video games, more than other types of entertainment, are about the experience of the audience. The stimulus is one directional when reading a book or watching a film. But video games cannot be played without a player. Instead of being a passive observer, the player of a video game actively determines its outcome. A game like Minecraft is so wildly successful because it allows the player to start from the very beginning, to create a world of their own. This, I believe, is why so-called gamers are so defensive about their chosen form of entertainment. They do not merely stand in an art gallery as an observer, but momentarily live in their chosen fictional world. The memory of playing a video game is the memory of a lived experience. If this experience is positive, it can create as much nostalgia as those in the real world. This is a fact the creators of Bioshock seem acutely aware of, and one of the reasons for its major lasting success. The design of Bioshock's principal playable character is such that the game's twists and turns feel like they are happening to the player themselves, as opposed to a disconnected third-party character that the player may or may not be invested in. The third reason for Bioshock's success is that it is political, and not in a trite, power is bad, love is good kind of way. I'm looking at you, Harry Potter. It engages deeper questions of political philosophy, Although the perspective of the game is not particularly original, the narratives that are used to present its messages are. Now, the events of the game are set in an underwater city called the Rapture, intentionally located to be outside of any external governmental jurisdiction. The city was founded on laissez-faire capitalist principles, but more than that, it was founded on a certain attitude, what one might call a certain sense of life. These principles and attitudes are drawn from a philosophical system developed by Ayn Rand called objectivism. In her own words, A philosophy based on objective reality. Now let me explain it as briefly as I can. First, my philosophy is based on 
the concept that reality exists as an objective absolute, that man's mind, reason, is his means of perceiving it, and that man needs a rational morality. I am primarily the creator of a new code of morality, which has so far been believed impossible, namely, a morality not based on faith. On or faith. Not on faith, not on arbitrary whim, not on emotion, not on arbitrary edict, mystical or social, but on reason, a morality which can be proved by means of logic, which can be demonstrated to be true and necessary. All right. All right. Now, may I define what my morality is? All right. Because this is merely an introduction. My morality is based on man's life as a standard of value. And since man's mind is his basic means of survival, I hold that if man wants to live on earth and to live as a human being, he has to hold reason as an absolute, by which I mean that he has to hold reason as his only guide to action, and that he must live by the independent judgment of his own mind, that his highest moral purpose is the achievement of his own happiness, and that he must not force other people, nor accept their right to force him, that each man must live as an end in himself and follow his own rational self-interest. Now, Ayn Rand was a provocative thinker who stood in opposition to many of the fundamental assumptions of her day. So a fictional world based on her ideas, honestly presented, is bound to be thought-provoking as well. The story explores how certain political values lead people to certain actions, and those actions have wider political consequences on a grand scale. The ideal objectivist society is a free society of free people seeking their own long-term self-interest, with the government's only purposes being military defence and the protection of individual rights. This third reason is where I come in. The game is widely understood to be a criticism not only of objectivism, but of Ayn Rand herself. Now, as someone who is an objectivist, I have something to say about that. The events of the game are largely inspired by the plot of Ayn Rand's novel, Actor Shrugged, in which a character called John Galt found a capitalist utopia hidden from government interference. In Bioshock, Andrew Ryan founds an underwater city based on the same principles. However, in Atlas Shrugged, the capitalist society is a great success. In Bioshock, it is not. In this series, I intend to do two things. The first is a playthrough of the game of Bioshock, a journey on which I invite you to participate. The second is what I anticipate will be the most comprehensive analysis of Bioshock ever uploaded to YouTube. That being said, there are, f there are people far better qualified than me to criticize and analyze the game from a technical and gameplay perspective. So I will be only mentioning these as and when they are relevant to the wider objectivist analysis. To start any good critique requires observation of the evidence. So let us begin to play without haste. I will see you soon in Rapture. <laughs>